Even though you want to win this battle, now which one of us is screwing around? I want it too. I'll be a hero. everyone kaiser here and today i'll be doing another action figure comparison video and today i will be covering the figma and mcfarland shoto todoroki hopefully this video is going to be a bit shorter than my other action figure comparisons mostly because i'm only covering two figures this time but i hope you guys do enjoy the video and i hope to get this out um at least close to Shoto's birthday, since I thought that would be a good time to make this video. So with that, let's get into it. First up, it. we have sculpting and painting. And I have to say that both of these figures um, pull it off pretty well. Um, both the Figma and McFarlane figures go for Shoto's second costume design, which I think is a good thing since his first costume design was kind of boring, let's be honest. And it's kind of hard to say which one pulls it off better in terms of the um, design itself. But I think the deal breaker comes um, in the head. With Figma, it does look pretty good. And I've said this for Figma before. And it's still true. It's really accurate to the anime. Which I think is a good thing. <laughs> but when it comes to McFarlane, while it doesn't look bad necessarily, it doesn't exactly look like Shoto. I think the eyes are a bit too like small or slanted. And the scar could be painted a bit better. So again, it doesn't look bad, but it's not exactly accurate. You can see that they were going for a sort of serious look, like what the Figma pulls off. But instead, it kind of gives Shoto a bored look, which doesn't fit as well. So when it comes to the rankings... First is obviously going to go to Figma, and second is going to go to McFarlane, only because of the head sculpt. Next up we have accessories, and starting with Figma, it comes with a fairly good batch of accessories. He comes with a pair of fists, open palm hands, grabbing hands, and action pose hands. He also comes with three faces, that being a neutral serious face, an angry face, and a slight smile. And, because this is Shoto, he comes with two effect pieces, one being fire and one being ice. And what I like about these accessories is that they kind of um, represent how Shoto uses both his fire and his ice quirk. Because with the ice, it's a piece that goes on the floor and attaches to his foot, since Shoto does a lot of ice attacks um, from his legs. And the fire is a arm attachment because that's usually how he uses fire so i like that it's kind of a neat touch um to how he uses the how he uses his quirk and i like how they implemented it for mcfarlane he comes with a pair of fists a pair of gripping hands and he comes with two um effect pieces like figma that being again fire and ice and both of them attached to his arms which again they do look pretty good to be honest i do wish the um fire effect had a bit more i guess paint or just different like colored plastic to make it you know a bit more colored but again it's not bad and i have to say i do like um how they look but if it when it comes to price i would say you technically get more with the mcfarlane than figma since we all know how Figma can be with prices. And again, it's not a bad set of accessories for Figma, but for the prices that the Figma Sh Shoto is going for, I'm not sure I would want to pay that much. But yeah, in terms of accessories, it's hard to say, because technically speaking, 
you do get a lot more with Figma, but what you'll be paying probably isn't worth it. So, this might be a bit controversial, but um, for what you get with McFarlane, I would say it gets first place for that. It technically comes with all you need for Shoto, and second would go to Figma. Next up is articulation. Starting with Figma, it comes with the standard Figma articulation, and it does work pretty well for the poses you want to get Shoto into, but it does come with some problems, that being um, mostly just the gapping that will occur mostly in the torso. It's not really that big of a problem, um, especially if you're posing him facing forward, but it's still something to be aware of. That and there is some limitations in um, some places like the neck, which again, isn't too bad, but it's not a problem. <laughs> um, when it comes to McFarlane, it actually has some pretty good articulation as well. Aside from the thigh swivel, which is something I've talked about before, and it's something that um, a lot of people have a problem with when it comes to McFarlane figures, you can still get him into some pretty good poses. And unlike the Figma figure, you can pose the torso and it will look practically seamless. And that's because of kind of like this sleeve that goes over the articulation. You will get some gapage at the bottom of it if you pose him um, forward a bit too much, but still it looks pretty good. When it comes to rankings for these figures, I would have to say that it's honestly a draw since both of them have really good articulation and you can get them in a lot of poses. So yeah, it's a draw in this case. Next up we have scale and starting with McFarlane, I'm pretty sure you all know the problem I'm going to point out. It's the fact that Shoto in the McFarlane line is way too tall. Now, if you know the official heights of the characters, you'll know that out of the big three, that being Midoriya, Bakugo, and Shoto, Shoto is the tallest, standing at about 5.9, I believe. So yes, he is the tallest out of those three, but in the McFarlane line, he's almost as tall as All Might, which throws off pretty much everything. <laughs> Um, I'm not gonna get into a big rant about it since I've already done that, but yeah, he's way too tall compared to the other characters in the My Hero Academia McFarlane line. Um, I've actually seen a few people shorten him a bit just so he'll look a bit better next to the other characters, which is something I wish McFarlane did. Hopefully, if they make another Shoto, they'll fix the scaling, but I'm not really hoping for that. But yeah, it's just that it's too tall. When it comes to Figma Shoto, you would think that it would be pretty in scale with the other um, Figma My Hero Academia figures. But technically he's not. When compared to Midoriya and Bakugo again, um, while he is the tallest out of all of them, he's still a bit too short. Um, as far as I know, compared to Midoriya, um, he, like, Midoriya's around, I would say, like, his chest and or his neck. So, he is shorter, um, than Shoto, but when we're talking about the figures, Shoto still looks a bit too short compared to the others. But still, it's a lot closer in scale than what McFarlane got us, so it's a plus. So, for the rankings, it should be no surprise that... Um, Figma is in first, and McFarlane comes in at a second. And now it's time for my final thoughts. I think it's safe to say that, technically speaking, the Figma Todoroki is the better figure, but I'm actually surprised at how well the McFarlane figure is compared to um, the rest of the McFarlane My Hero line. Sure, there are a few problems with it, such as the face not being as good as it could be, and the figure being too tall, but I still think it's a pretty good figure um, for the price point, which is usually around $20, since you do get um, a good amount of articu articulation, 
the sculpting and painting are actually really good and the accessories you get um, are pretty cool. So yeah, I wouldn't say that the McFarlane is garbage, bottom of the barrel, because it's not. But I would say that it, it's a good figure that could use some tweaking. As for Figma, like I said, a lot of people agree that it's a pretty good figure. But, you know, that's just my opinion on how I feel about these figures. So I hope you guys appreciate my opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll hopefully have it out um, by today, January 11th, Shoto's birthday, which will be amazing. And if that's the case, then great. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And happy birthday, Todoroki.